Hello everyone. I am Professor Anishwara and I welcome you all in this video lecture. In this video lecture, we will study about uh, stator design of synchronous machine or rather synchronous alternator. In case of synchronous alternator, we know that uh, normally armature is working as a stator. So uh, uh, we will discuss about uh, our stator design. So what exactly we will be doing while designing the stator? When we say stator, we know that it is always armature. So let us see one by one which part of the stator we will we'll be going to design. So we start with stator number of slots. Then we have stator number of turns per phase. Then cross section area of the stator conductor, stator winding, stator coil, slot and coil insulation, slot dimension and at last stator core design. This much of parameters uh, will be going to design in step by step in during the, our stator design. But in this video lecture we will design stator number of slots, stator number of turns per phase and the cross section area of the stator conductor. The remaining parameters of stator design we will be discussing in our next video lecture. So let us start with uh, factors which affect the number of stator slots. In case of uh, stator slots whether to keep a large number of stator slots or whether to keep smaller number of stator slots that depends on certain factors. There is actually no definite rules to define the number of stator uh, slots but we will see some of the factors and then we will be discussing some guidelines and then how we can select our number of stator slots. So some of the factors which really affects while choosing the number of stator slots. So this is a flux density in the teeth, then a leakage reactance, tooth ripples, hotspot temperature and cost. So let us discuss the effect of uh, all these uh, different factors and how it uh, affects on the selection or uh, number of stator slots. So we start with the flux density. Suppose in most of the cases we will discuss the factors keeping in mind that we are uh, choosing a higher number of stator slots. So if number of slots are chosen uh, higher then width of the teeth that will be narrower. So with more number of slots obviously the width of the teeth will be less and if width of the teeth is less then flux density in the teeth will be very high. So this is one of the disadvantage of keeping number of slots higher. Flux density in the teeth will be more and we know that uh, we have a limiting flux density in teeth and that is maximum 1.8 tesla. So uh, this we have to keep in mind while selecting number of slots that if we go for a higher and higher number of slots then obviously width will be narrower and flux density will be going to increase. So we have a constraint while a number of uh, selecting while a number of slots. So flux density will be going very high in the width or teeth and at the same time mechanical strength of the teeth will reduce if we select a number of slots, higher number of slots. So width of the teeth will be narrow and mechanical strength will be reduced. Same way second parameter is our leakage reactance. So again if we go for a higher number of slots 
we know that uh, leakage reactance is inversely proportional to the number of slots per call per phase so if we go for higher number of slots then leakage reactance will be reduced so this is one of the advantage and we know that if leakage reactance is less we have number of uh, advantages so this is one of the advantage of keeping a number of slots uh, higher then our next uh, that is tooth ripples again if we go for a higher number of slots then uh, obviously the slotting effect will be less and tooth ripples which will be very less and if tooth ripples are less then we know that pulsation loss will be reduced so this is again one of the advantage of keeping a higher number of slots then hot spot temperature suppose number of slots are chosen less in most of the cases we have taken that we is should select a number of slots higher and we have certain advantage also of choosing a higher number of slots but suppose we take a less number of slots then number of conductor per slot will be more so space for the air circulation will reduce and if the space for air circulation reduce then internal hot spot temperature will increase so this is one of the disadvantage of keeping a less number of slots and this indicates that we should always go for higher number of slots our next is a cost so if we go for higher number of slots we have number of advantages but uh, in case of cost if we go for higher number of slots then we have number of uh, coils more we require more insulation and labor cost increase so overall cost of the machine is going to be increased so this is one of the disadvantage of uh, selecting large number of slots so designer have to compromise between at uh, some place whether we are planning to design a cheaper design or a better performance so accordingly we have to design our machine but uh, these are some of the factors which we should keep in mind while selecting or while choosing our number of slots of the stator then we have certain guideline if we follow the factors which really affects the selection and ultimately the performance of the machine at the same time we have certain guideline and we have to follow this guideline one of the guideline that is a slot loading so ampere conductor so slot loading must be less than 1500 ampere then we have number of slots per call per phase in case of salient pole alternator we know that uh, number of poles will be very high so number of slots per call per phase uh, is recommended between 2 to 4 and at the same time in case of turbo alternator number of poles are less so number of slots per call per phase is recommended slightly higher and that is 7 to 9 slot pitch so for low voltage machine slot pitch should be less than 25 mm up to 6 kv machine slot pitch should be less than 40 mm and for higher uh, voltage machine up to 15 kv slot pitch should be less than 60 mm so these are some of the guidelines and normally while choosing a number of slots we follow this guideline as well as we keep our uh, some of the factors in mind while selecting our number of slots of the stator then our next uh, topic that is uh, number of turns per phase we know that emf equation of the alternator that is a uh, 
EMF per phase is equal to 4.44 multiplied by KW multiplied by 5 multiplied by F and multiplied by tons per phase. So we know that uh, EMF per phase that is E and suffix pH that is per phase, KW that is winding factor, 5 that is flux per pole and F that is frequency. So from this equation we can easily able to find the number of turns per phase. So number of turns per phase can be given as uh, induced EMF per phase divided by 4.44 flux 5 F and uh, winding factor KW. If all the turns per phase are series in series per phase then we have a single circuit. So we can use this equation but if we have a number of parallel path suppose we have number of A parallel path then we have to use this equation to find the number of turns per phase but all the parameters are known except flux per pole if flux is not available then we cannot find the number of turns per phase from this equation so we have to use another equation to find the flux per pole we know that uh, specific magnetic loading and the specific magnetic loading is known because in starting while selecting or while uh, designing our main dimension we choose our specific magnetic loading so specific magnetic loading is known and we know the equation for specific magnetic loading that is a uh, BAV is equal to total uh, flux that is P5 divided by pi dl where D and L that is the diameter of the stator bore and L is the length of the stator core. So from this equation we can easily find flux that is a BAV multiplied by pi DL and divided by P. If we simplify this equation then it becomes BAV multiplied by tau and multiplied by L. Now all the parameters are known and from this equation we can easily calculate flux phi which can be used in the equation uh, for turns per phase where uh, tau, tau is a uh, all pitch and that is the pi d that is our circumference and pi d divided by p. So our next topic of uh, stator design that is a uh, to define the cross section area of the armature conductor. So before we start uh, calculating our area of armature conductor, we know that uh, full load current of the machine per phase we should able to calculate and with the help of that uh, current we will be finding our area required area for the armature conductor. So with this equation current or full load current per phase can be easily calculated so that is I phase is equal to KVA multiplied by 10 raised to 3 and divided by 3 multiplied by EMF per phase and if we consider a single circuit per phase then the I phase that is equal to IZ so IZ is total conductor passing through the conductor, total current passing through the conductor. So now next point that is the current density. In case of current density we know that delta, delta is current density that is ampere per millimeter square. So current density is equal to IZ divided by AZ where IZ is current passing through the conductor and AZ that is the cross section area of the armature conductor. So from this equation if current density is known then we will be able to find the area of conductor. So area of conductor or cross section area of the conductor AZ that is IZ divided by delta. Now delta is the current density and depends on a number of uh, different factors uh, for example it depends on the 
type of enclosure we use or type uh, uh, speed of the machine but in most of the cases while selecting current density we should always keep in mind the cooling condition so if better cooling condition is applied to the machine then we can go for higher current density and uh, our area of conductor is inversely proportional to the current density so if higher current density is selected then uh, area of conductor will be less but in normal case delta that is current density is chosen between 3 to 4 uh, 5 ampere per millimeter square so this way we are able to find the area of the armature conductor so in this video lecture we have studied about uh, how to select number of status slots some of the factors which really affects the selection of uh, number of slots then we have certain guidelines which must be followed before uh, finalizing the number of status slots then we have total tons per phase and uh, with a simple equation we will be able to calculate the total number of tons per phase and at last uh, area or cross section area of the armature conductor is uh, very easily calculated so I stop here some of the more stator parameters designing parameters will be discussing in our next video lecture so uh, thank you thank you very much for watching my video keep watching thank you very much